Once the main line is passed, the second sensor of the power is restored. Now this is, this is clever. This is worth the price of emission right now. I was proud of this. This is the whole circuit. Here you've got the two blocks where you're going to stop the trolley or whatever it is. First thing, make sure that the crossing is always live. Because if the trolley's at the crossing, when the other train comes by, it'll stop. On the crossing. Bad. So the crossing is always live. You have a dead spot or a controllable spot before and a controllable spot after, right? There are two diodes here. This is the part that's worth the trip. If the train is going this way, the diodes say stop because you're about to hit the, the crossing. If the train's on the other side of the crossing, it keeps going. Because there's nothing stupider than having a trolley stop after, the other, after it's crossed the crossing and the train's going by. It's waiting for something that's behind it. Does that make sense? And that works like a charm. Two reed switches. I mean, what you've got there, you, sub, you throw a relay in, and that's a piece of cake. All you need to do to fire a relay, again, don't connect a relay directly to a pin on a pickaxe. Can't handle it. A single transistor. What did I say at the beginning? A transistor is nothing but an on-off switch. A 2N2222 is about a quarter. Or on eBay, you know, a penny. And a 1K resistor, a 1,000 ohm resistor, into the base of that, and you're done. I mean, there's nothing to it. I do it all the time. Questions? We're getting useful, yes? Out of this lousy little 8-pin, 3-buck? Well, one question. Sure. About the uh, turn it on, turn it off. How do you use a photo cell to know when to go, by, when it's on and when it's off? Well, okay, the question was how do you use a photo cell instead of a read switch? Or some other switch, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will digress 1.5. Now, this was digression 1. We're now for digression 1.5. This is a whole system that does exactly what you just asked. Isn't that a coincidence? <laughs> and the way this thing works, and I'll, I'll be, I'm not going to set it up now because of time, but if you want, I'll set it up over at the large-scale booth. These are infrared uh, sensors. You put one of these on either side. You, know, you put the track in the middle, and it, outside you bury this, okay? so that this is just above the track. This guy here is an infrared emitter. Sends out infrared, not just straight infrared, because this is designed for outside use, and there's a big source of infrared that'll make you crazy in the garden. You know that big thing that we don't see in York? <laughs> Sun? So this infrared here is pulsed at 38 kilohertz, and that little chip can do that. There's an infrared detector over here that only reacts to 38 kilohertz infrared. And that ties into the, that's the exact same chip. There's a relay in there, does the whole deal. And the two, the two diodes are in there too. Cool, huh? That'll be an article. I haven't written it yet, but in the next month or two or three when I get around to it. I'm going to the Phoenix convention. And what frequently happens is I'll write those articles. Uh, my wife and I'll swap off on driving and I'll write it. So maybe, it, maybe after the uh, Phoenix convention. And there's the little close-up. Again, the relay simply attaches power or takes power away from those blocks, and the diodes decide if it's going that way, it goes. If it's going this way, it stops. I like diodes. OK. I don't call myself clever too often, but I was real pleased with that. OK. Da, da, da. More sophisticated optical. Oh, yeah. More, how, how did it know you were? Yeah. Optical sensors. OK. And there's, that's the, that actually is the circuit board that's in that little blue box that I showed you a minute ago. There's the little 8-pin chip. That's where the optical sensors go. That's the relay that takes the power away. Uh, there's not a whole lot to it. End digression number one. Questions up to there. OK. So far, we've used what? Oh, we didn't test. Maybe 20% of the, me the memory of the little gizmo. Let me show you this. You'll like this one. We're going to have to switch, and I'm going to impose on you to hold up in the air again. I want to give you an idea of how much storage space. OK, same little pickaxe. This is our little blinky fellow. I'm going to go back now to the programmer. And if I have program, I think I need program 5. Uh, 5.
You'll notice it's taking a little longer. And now we're using 100 out of 256. What's it doing? No ham radio operators in the audience? It's doing Morris code. It's actually saying uh, Pittsburgh uh, and in my ham radio call in 3 ENM. I have a, a radio t uh, shack, you know, a little building in my layout with a three foot high brass tower that I made with a solar powered one of these at the top. During the day it blinks in white and during the night it blinks in red and does that. That's the same chip, guys. Did we make any hardware changes? No. It's all up here. And I don't want you to be too impressed. I didn't write that. I'm good at Google. I found it. A guy in New Zealand wrote that. Stan Swan. So instead of me writing it, I sent an email to Stan and said, hey Stan, would you mind if I used your program at presentations and things? And he said, yeah, sure, go ahead. But at least I took the time to you know, get permission. And you can have it, you know, any ham radio call? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm using some more, or he's using some more sophisticated things using symbols so that you have more English type words, but yeah. But that's all straight, that's the same chip that did our, yeah. And the program goes down quite a ways, I mean, it's long. Thanks to you, I just started doing this. I'm sorry? I said thanks to you, I just started doing Good, I gotcha. All right. All right. Now, next thing. Some years ago, there was uh, a person, I forget who it was, on Large Scale Online that asked about uh, a lighthouse beacon because they bought one of these Walmart lighthouses that was solar. And it looked kind of stupid because when the sun went down, it went. And lighthouses don't do that. They're supposed to do this. So I thought about it a little bit, and I came up with some design objectives. I said, what you want to do for a lighthouse is gradually brighten a bulb or an LED to full, near full brightness. You want to flash it and then dim it back down to off and then pause and so on and so forth. Okay, and repeat. I wanted to be able to use both LEDs or incandescent bulbs. Here's one of the problems. Lighthouses don't do this, they do this. Do you follow what I mean? It's not a straight linear progression. So I had a little bit of a challenge programming. Uh, parts, this adds one resistor and one transistor. Remember a few minutes ago I mentioned I used a transistor to get those brighter Lionel bulbs to blink? That, this is how I did it right here. Uh, the most significant changes to the software. There's the change. You put another transistor, excuse me, quarter, down here, and it'll run four, five, six, ten LEDs at a time. It doesn't care. And if you want to do an incandescent bulb, everybody knows what a halogen bulb is, like for a desk lamp, 10 watt which is very bright, you use a bigger transistor that might cost a buck. And that's what that is, a TIP-102. So did you use multiple LEDs to simulate the thing? Ah, boy, jeez. <laughs> I'm going to have to pay him off. Something about this should be bothering you. And it was, right? 